السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them May he bless every one of us and grant us forgiveness in this beautiful eve of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his mercy. May Allah have mercy upon us, our offspring, our family members, our friends, our relatives, the ummah at large. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on humanity. Amin. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we know that life on earth does not last forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us in a position of weakness where we are weak and thereafter he gives us strength and after that strength he makes us weak once again and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the perfect example of the life on earth and in surah al-hadid which is surah number 57 of the Quran verse number 20 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد. You should know that the life of this dunya. Then he gives us five points about the life of the dunya. What are these five points? He says, you should know that the life of this dunya, la'ibun. Firstly, it is play. Secondly, it is amusement. So when we say play, my beloved brothers and sisters, what we need to understand, when a child is little, the child is happy with something that makes the child play. It plays with a sound, a rattle, for example. At that stage, it is called la'ib. La'ib meaning to play. So if you have a small baby, the little baby does not need a sophisticated toy of amusement. What it needs is something to play with, something to occupy it, to distract it. At that juncture, is, it is the beginning of the life of this baby. When the child grows a little bit more, it no longer is satisfied with a little rattle or something that is just mechanical. It now needs something more complicated. Our children need fidget spinners, don't they? May Allah forgive us. Our children need, for example, a little phone, a gadget. From an early age, they start crying for a car. No longer the car that you push, but the car that you press the buttons and it moves, the remote control. So the children become a little bit more sophisticated. In the Arabic language, the term lahu is more sophisticated than the term la'ib. La'ib means to play. And lahu is more of amusement. It is slightly deeper. It is a little bit more of a different nature, sophisticated nature of play. So Allah says, the life on earth is like this. It starts off with play, then it gets to amusement. Laib, walahu. Then when the child becomes teenage, they become conscious of themselves. A small pimple on the face and they want to cover it. They want to block it. They, they don't want to leave the home because you know what? Look at this. Look at what it looks like. I don't like my nose and I don't like my eyes and my ears. That's normal at the age of 15, 16, 17. Subhanallah. You start becoming conscious of your teeth and your chin. Nobody ever noticed it, but you start noticing. Allah says, Wazinatun. The beauty then sets in. You know, you're worried about the zina, everything that is beautiful, it starts attracting you. You look at that uncle's car and you look at this auntie's handbag, for example, and you try and look at what's going on in this house and all these things start attracting an individual. And then once a person gets his job and he starts, subhanallah, earning money and so on, listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم. Then you earn and you start competing with one another. I am bragging about what I have. This one has more. This one has even more. This guy has two Lamborghinis. That one has a whole showroom of them. Subhanallah. Just an example. This person has, for example, a beautiful home. That one has a whole host of buildings and so on. It becomes tafakhurun bainakum. And after that, it's more to do with the numbers rather than the items that you have. Now we all have Lamborghinis. Now it's got to do with how many you have. Subhanallah. So Allah says, 
وتكاثر. And تكاثر means increase in number. كثير means a lot. تكاثر in two things. Man loves to have more in two things. أموال and أولاد. His wealth and his children. You find the old man saying, you know what, I got 17 grandchildren. Have you heard that? They start counting because that's fakhr, subhanallah. That is a sense of pride for the person. Let's hope it's in the right direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So Allah mentions this. He says, look at how man develops. He starts off in this way, then he goes up, then he earns, then he amasses, then it's to do with how much he has, then it's to do with the wealth he has. So you have 12 children, they are all doctors, for example. Subhanallah, you're happy to say, Mashallah, you know, I've got 10 sons and they all give me some tension. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. They all, subhanallah, contribute positively or they all are well to do. They're all doing well. Subhanallah, that is a blessing of Allah. My brothers and sisters, to have children who are the coolness of your eyes is the biggest blessing you can have after Iman and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because those children will actually make dua for you. They will actually be a means also of your entry into Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah grant us children and may, may those children be the coolness of our eyes. Ameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, people start bragging about what they have in terms of quantity, wealth and children. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Takathurun fil amwali wal awlad. And at a certain point, you know that when you have a farm and you see the crop, what is the condition of the crop at the various stages? Number one, it's a seed, you sow it. After that, it's a seedling. As it's growing, you see it, you're happy to see it green and strong. And thereafter, the rains come. You're excited to see how, how the, the crop is beautiful. And it gets to a point where if you do not harvest it at that juncture, you're going to lose the crop. You need to know when to harvest. At a certain point, you pluck it and it's gone. Subhanallah. The same applies to our lives. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرًا ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا Just like the rain that makes the farmers very happy. The term kuffar here refers to the farmers, those who farm. They are also, you know, one of the terms is kuffar, used for farmers, not because, astaghfirullah, they've lost iman, but because they hide the seed under the ground. So that is called to hide something. They put it under the ground. So this is why Allah says, the farmers, they become happy when they see that rain. And you know what? The, 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 the growth of the crop from the rain makes them very happy and after a while if they were to leave it it begins to wilt and it becomes useless subhanallah with us my brothers and sisters the point being raised here save yourselves from the day when you will not have the energy to fulfill the command of Allah by fulfilling it now while you're healthy. The hadith says, Ightanim khamsan qabla khams. Seize five opportunities before they are overtaken by five conditions. What are these? Subhanallah. Your health, your wealth, your life, your young age, and your time. These are the opportunities Allah has given you. If you don't utilize these five, I promise you they will be overtaken by conditions that are the opposite and then you regret. So Allah is giving us a beautiful example here and that is verse number 20 of Surah Al-Hadid for all of us to take heed and to learn lesson from. Thereafter, I move on to Surah Al-Mujadala. Al-Mujadala referring to the dispute that occurred at the time of the Prophet ﷺ between a certain lady, her husband on one hand and her complaint to Muhammad ﷺ on the other. So she came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, you know, my husband, he has actually equated me to his own mother and he doesn't touch me and so on. I was young, I bore his children and a long story. As a result of it, subhanallah, she complained to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moments later, Allah revealed verses. Now before I say what these verses are in brief, I want to take you to reality in our lives. My brothers and sisters, are you oppressing someone who can hardly do anything about that oppression besides complain to Allah. 
Sometimes a wife in the home is being oppressed to the degree that she is sworn, she is physically abused, mentally abused, emotionally abused. She is struggling, suffering. She has nowhere to go. She has no family to report to. She has none to complain to. She is stuck, sometimes even suicidal. And she is choking in the relationship, but she doesn't know. She is stuck between a rock and a very hard place. So the only one she turns to is Allah. Allah listens to her. Sometimes it is the child in a home. We are so bad to them because you have, for example, a child who may not exactly be yours, maybe a stepchild, maybe a child of whoever else is there in the equation and you treat them badly, unfairly. Sometimes our own children, because they are dark in complexion and the others are fair, we treat them like they are an outcast. Wallahi, I know of examples of children who have emailed me telling me that my mother tells me the rest of the children will walk with us in the mall, but you walk behind. Just just because I'm dark in complexion. Wallahi, it's happening. Don't think this doesn't happen. Shaitan comes to people, they will outcast their own children. A'udhu billah. This is the devil. And this is why we have to talk about this. Be careful. Allah has blessed you, bestowed upon you. These are the, the gifts of Allah upon you. Remember, if you were to oppress someone, you were to harm them, if they have nowhere to go and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beckoned and he is called, I promise you he will come and the punishment will be absolutely severe. Remember this. If you have oppressed someone, it's not like you can get away with it. It's going to come back to haunt you, Wallahi. So save yourselves by not doing this. Don't do it, whether it's to your parents, those who work for you. Sometimes we choke them in the relationship with them, that they are depressed. They pray against us every day. Oh Allah, destroy this man. And they mean it. A day will come when that destruction, Wallahi, will come. Wallahi, it will come. Be careful. So Allah says, this woman was helpless. Her husband refused to be intimate with her. Her husband refused to fulfill her rights. Her husband said, you know what? You are just like my mother. Subhanallah, astaghfirullah. And so she complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the first verse, the whole surah is named after her. If we say al-mujadila, it refers to the lady. And if we say al-mujadala, it refers to the dispute and that particular issue that she brought up. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوْرَكُمَا Indeed, Allah has heard. Indeed, Allah has heard the woman who has come to you complaining to Allah about her husband. And Allah has heard the discussion that happened between the two of you. For indeed, Allah is all hearing all seeing subhanallah and then allah gives the conclusion and the solution and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam what to do but the point i wanted to raise we need to save ourselves from people complaining to allah about us rather they sort the matter out between us so that we don't have to have a complaint with allah lodged against us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and strengthen us Improve your relationships in your homes. Improve your relationships with those whom you live with. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be the happiest people. Let's move on to Surah Al-Hashr. Surah number 59 of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Muhajireen and the Ansar. Who were they? The Muhajireen were those who were forced to leave Mecca with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and enter Medina. They were large numbers. And the Ansar were those in Medina Munawwara. Sorry, they went from Mecca to Medina. The, the Ansar were those in Medina Munawwara who were the helpers, who helped those who made the Hijrah. How did they help them? By opening their doors for them, by welcoming them, by sharing their wealth with them. Allah loved both parties. Allah has praised them in Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 8. Allah says, للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون Those who are poor from among the muhajirin who were driven out of their homes and their wealth was usurped from them all seeking the pleasure of Allah. It was in the cause of Allah. Because of Allah, they lost everything. Some people, they accept Islam. As a result of them accepting Islam, their family ostracizes them. They lose everything sometimes. How do we react 
to these people? Do we embrace them? Do we make them feel comfortable? Do we make them feel like a brother or a sister of ours? Do we open our doors for them? Do we even share anything with them? Subhanallah, the muhajireen were driven out of their homes for the sake of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they were truthful. Why does Allah say they were truthful? When a person is persecuted and they are still holding on what they believe, then they are genuine, they are truthful. Life is difficult. Right now, it's not easy to become a Muslim because everyone looks at Muslims with an eye of suspicion, right? But you and I know that Islam is not guilty of what the people are guilty of sometimes. But to become a Muslim in these days, this day and age, it's really a sign of genuineness because you are sacrificing a lot for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Ulaika humus sadiqun. They were truthful. Then Allah describes those who opened their homes. Two qualities made mention of here. In fact, three, but two of them, Allah says, those who opened their houses, their doors, whatever they had, they loved the ones who came to them from the muhajirin. They loved them. You know, today we look at the term refugee. That's the word we use. The minute you hear the word refugee, some people in their minds, this is a menace. It's a problem. It's a difficulty. Keep them there. Close them there. Do this to them. No. Allah says those who are successful are the ones who look at their brothers and sisters in need with such love that they seize the opportunity to earn Jannah by serving them. Subhanallah. You see someone in need, look at that as a chance to go to Jannah rather than looking at it as a pest and a pain and a problem and a difficulty. No, Allah did not need to create people in need. Never. He could have met their need without you, but he dangled it in front of you for you to earn your Jannah. Subhanallah. Allah made people in need, in meaning designed by him in order to give those who are not in need an opportunity to share with the others so that they can earn Jannah. And Allah gives the example, verse number 9 of the surah that I just read for you now. Allah says, they don't find a need in them for that which Allah blessed them with. When Allah gave them something, they are not stingy and miserly. They are quick to share it. Allah says, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ They give preference to others over their own need. And then Allah says, the most powerful term in this verse, even if they are in dire need, they'll share it. Subhanallah. That khasasah, you know what it means? I am desperately in need of something, but I look at my brother and I say, Subhanallah, he needs it more. Take it. And I pretend like I didn't need it and I walk off. And only Allah knows that I needed it a lot. That is a quality. Allah says, those are the ones who are successful. Subhanallah. Whoever saves himself or herself from the miserliness of his own heart will be successful. This comes into our theme, saving ourselves. Whoever saves himself or herself from the miserliness, stinginess of his own heart is the one who is truly successful. So my brothers and sisters, you want to know if you are successful in the dunya and the akhirah? Ask yourself, am I miserly? Am I stingy? Do I hold things? Do I hold them back? Do I hoard things? Subhanallah, a lot of us, wallahi, our cupboards are filled with clothing that we've never worn for the last two years. Go home tonight, take it out, make somebody's eat. Subhanallah, go and give it to the poor. Trust me, you don't need it. You have not used it for two years. Wallahi, you don't need it. Why are you amassing it? Take it out. Don't let your heart become too connected to materialistic items. So what? It's your car. It's okay if someone scratched it. It's your clothing. It's okay if it was burnt with the iron. It's your perfume. It's okay if the bottle drop and dropped and cracked. It is a piece of cutlery. It's okay if someone broke it in the home. No problem. Subhanallah. They did not do it intentionally. But when your heart is connected to materialistic items, you become so angry when something goes wrong materialistically. Yet, it was a test from Allah. Allah knew it was going to happen before you were born. He knew it was placed in your life in order to test you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to pass our test. 
Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I've said this before. I repeat it. Allah has given us our basic necessity, all of us. But beyond that basic necessity is what we are fighting for at the moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us grateful. This is why Allah calls these people highly successful because they were sharing that which they needed themselves with their brothers who had come from afar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them all. Radiyallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with all of those companions. They were our heroes. They were the ones, subhanallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something really, really beautiful. A warning for all of us about the devil. You see what the devil does. He lights a match. He starts the flame. He walks away. So the inferno is now catching. Subhanallah, everything is being burnt. We need to be careful. Recognize the devil. Allah says, watch out. The devil starts a problem, walks away. Then he leaves you there. And you start kindling it. Subhanallah. Like the example given of the devil. The devil says, you know what? I am going to make people kill each other. How? Well, he took a bit of honey and he placed it on a little tablecloth and he walked away. Gone. Little while later, a fly came and sat on it. Sometime later, a spider came and ate the fly. A little while later, a lizard came and ate the spider. Subhanallah. Sometime later, a rat came and ate the lizard. A few moments later, a cat came and ate the rat. Subhanallah. A little while later, another cat came and started fighting for that particular rat. And what happened? The two cats were fighting until one, one cat was killed by the other. And here comes the owner of the first cat to the owner of the second cat. Now these are now human beings. And they start fighting with each other. What did the devil do? He says, I did nothing. I just put a little drop of honey there. I went. Gone. Now this is obviously an example, but the, re <laughs> the real example in our lives, it happens where something small and we make such a huge thing out of it. We are human. So that is why we always need to go back. And look at it and say, Astaghfirullah, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done this. It was so minor, so basic. Cut it and extinguish it, nip it in the bud, as they say. Before it grows bigger, sort it out. You have a problem between husband and wife. Before you lay down that night, it must be nipped in the bud. Sort it out. You don't leave it for tomorrow because at night, it starts bubbling and growing in the heart. You know, you left the problem for tomorrow morning. By that time, khalas, at night, I already was inspired by the devil. What to do? That's it. May Allah forgive us. Sort your matters out ASAP. You have an issue today before tomorrow. May Allah make us from those who can resolve our matters. So verse number 16 of Surah Al-Hashr, which is Surah number 59 of the Quran. Allah says, كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كفر فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ Look at the example of the devil. He tells man, disbelieve. And when man disbelieves, he says, hey, me, I believe in Allah. I fear the Lord, subhanAllah. So Allah says, look at the devil. He tells you to do something knowing that it's bad for you. So you are on your own. You need to think for yourself what's right and wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his mercy. Then we have a verse that we always read so many times. Yet its meaning is absolutely powerful. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. Verse number 18 of Surah Al Hashr. Allah says, O you who believe, be conscious of Allah, and each one of you look into what you have prepared to present to Allah tomorrow. Look at what you have prepared for tomorrow. Each one of you should look into your own account. What have you prepared? How are your accounts looking? You are going to be presenting them in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of you be conscious of what you have prepared for tomorrow. Subhanallah. And Allah says again in the same verse, Wattaqullah. Be conscious of Allah. For indeed, He knows what you do. He knows what you do. The problem is shaitan comes to us and he makes us lose by worrying about someone else. Look, when it comes to materialistic items, we are supposed to be looking at those who have less than us for us to be able to appreciate. When it comes to religious matters, we look at those who've achieved more than us so that we can work hard. 
But never ever look at others and try and think religiously. That look at this guy. He's committing this sin, that sin, this sin. In the interim, you are wasting your own time and you are oblivious about your own deeds. If you want to help him, help him. But you don't go around pointing fingers and tarnishing people's names, etc. Because of a weakness they have had. What you need to do is you either help him in a positive way, stop him from oppression if it is oppression. And at the same time, be careful about yourself. Because Allah is not going to ask you, you know what? Your neighbor, give us his accounts. What did he used to do at night? Never, never. It's to do with you. Allah is not going to ask you, the guy down the road, tell us about him. No, the lady who you saw shopping, Tell us about her. How was she operating? That's never going to happen. Allah says, we're going to ask you, Kullun yaqulu nafsi, nafsi. Each person will be saying, wow, what am I going to do? Myself, myself. Each one is worried about himself. So my brothers and sisters, let's save ourselves from worrying about others in a way that we are actually forgetting about correcting ourselves. Our lives should be so packed with rectification of the self that we have no time to go into the lives of others. This is how we will be able to succeed. Then I have the last two verses or the last verse for today. Inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow. The last verse for today, Surah Al-Mumtahina, Surah number 60 of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the lesson is for every one of us. He says, there is a chance that Allah can create love between you and your enemy. Subhanallah. Did you hear that? Asa Allahu an yaj'ala baynakum wa bayna alladheena aadaytum minhum mawaddah. Wallahu qadeer. Wallahu ghafoorur raheem. Verse number 7 of surah number 60. Allah says, indeed, Allah is all able and Allah can and Allah may create love between you and those whom there is an enmity against. For indeed Allah is able and Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Take a look at, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What happened with Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. He was an enemy of Islam. He killed so many of the Muslims. A day came when he became known as radiallahu anhu. We have to actually teach ourselves what it was all about. A time in the battle of Uhud when he was leading the kuffar, one of the groups of the kuffar who came from the other side of the mount. And that was a change in the course of that particular war of Uhud. We know that was Khalid ibn al-Walid. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. What happened to him? Enemy of Islam. Look at Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu. What happened to him? He was an enemy of Islam. They all changed. How? The will of Allah. Allah can create. And this is why in a narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about loving people and hating people. When you love someone, love them in moderation. Perhaps one day they may not be so close to you again. If you were intimately close to them that they knew your ins and outs, they can hold you ransom, subhanallah, because they know too many details about you. You were too close. That's the problem. You will pay a price for being so close to someone that you actually lowered your guard. And at the same time, you pay a price for hating someone so much that you are embarrassed to make amends with them one day. Ahbib habibaka haunamma asa an yakuna baghidaka yawmamma. Abghid baghidaka haunamma asa an yakuna habibaka yawmamma. When you love, you love in moderation. Perhaps that person may be your enemy one day. So be careful, think about it. And when you hate, you hate in moderation. Perhaps that person may be your beloved one day. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Take a look at this verse. Doesn't it show you the power of Allah? Doesn't it show you that Allah owns the hearts and these hearts turn by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will? So that is why we say, Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Oh Allah. Who strengthens the hearts, who is in control of the heart, strengthen my heart upon the deen, not away from it. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, these are some of the beautiful verses of the Quran. And this is how we will be able to save ourselves from problems, difficulties. Like I said, when you get too close to someone that you start telling them all your secrets, one day you may pay a heavy price for that. May Allah grant us all wisdom in our relationships. And when you dislike someone, be careful. You don't have to 
hurt them in a way that you will regret one day when you want to make amends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us again from among those who are wise. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.